All right, guys, in this video, I will show you how to create, read, update, and delete files from your file system using an Electron application. Now to save time, I've already set up the HTML and the CSS for this application. So let me walk you through that setup. Again, I have started with the Hello World application. So let's talk about the CSS first. I'm using Photon Kit, which is kind of like a CSS framework, but for Electron. So how do you add this to your application? Go to photonkit.com, scroll a bit below and click on download. Now when you download, you get a zipped file. Extract it and navigate inside the distributable folder or dist folder and then the CSS folder and then copy the minified CSS into your project folder. So the file name is going to be photon.min.css. So copy that and paste it in your project folder. Once you've done that, Go to your index.html and add a link to photon.min.css. So link rel equals stylesheet, href is equal to photon.min.css. Now next comes our HTML. Now we have a div tag with a class main wrapper. And this class, we have styles.css. We just have a margin of 25 pixels. So this is just to add margin on all four sides. Now within this div tag, we have an h1 tag and also a form tag. And within the form tag, we have two form groups. And again, these are classes from Photon CSS. So we have an input tag for the file name. So label file name and then input with an ID of file name and a text area for the file contents. So the label is contents and then a text area with ID file contents, and then the number of rows set to five. Now after this form, we have three buttons, one to create a file, one to read an existing file content, and the last one to delete the file. Now we don't have an update button because creating a file with the same file name is the same as updating a file. Now this will make more sense once we have the code in place, so don't worry. All right, so that is our HTML and CSS. For CSS, make sure you have photon.min.css and also styles.css with this main wrapper class. And in index.html, we have an h1 tag, we have a form tag with an input for file name and a text area for file contents and three buttons to create, read and delete file from our file system. So if I run our application now, you should have a better picture. So npm start, and there you go. We have our h1 tag, so crud file. We have our label file name, and then an input box to enter our file name. We have the label contents, and then a text area that shows the file contents. And then we of course have three buttons to create, read, and delete. All right, now that you have a better understanding of our HTML, it's time for JavaScript. So exit the application. Now, if you notice, we have a script tag and we have required index.js. Let's go ahead and create index.js. Now, anytime you work with file IO, we make use of the file system module in node. So const fs is equal to require fs. And to build paths, we are going to require the path module. So const path, is equal to require path. Next, let's get a hold of all the elements in our HTML. So I'm just going to copy paste some code. So we have button create, button read, button delete, file name and file contents. And we are going to document dot get element by ID on all of these HTML elements. So in our index.html, you can notice that we have ID equals file name id equals file contents, id equals button create, button read, and button delete. So we have button create, button read, button delete, and then file name, and then file contents. Now let's create a folder in our project and name it files. So over here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm gonna call this files. And this folder is where we will perform the CRUD operations. 
Let's add a variable to hold the path to this particular folder. So let path name is equal to path dot join double underscore directory name followed by the name of the folder, which is files. Next, we start implementing the button click handlers one by one. So first let's handle the create button. So button create dot add event listener. We're going to handle the click event and then we're going to execute a function on click. So first we are going to get the file name. So let file is equal to path dot join path name, which is the path to the folder and then the name that the user has provided in the input. So the input has an ID file name and we need its value. So file name dot value. So this gives us the complete path to the particular file that the user wants to create. Next, we need to grab all the contents. So let contents is equal to file contents. So this is the ID to the text area. And then we're going to say value. So we have the file name and we have the file contents. Next, we're going to use the file system module and then call write file. Now this write file takes in the file name, which is file, and then the file contents, which is contents, and then a callback function. Now this callback function can have an error. So if there is an error, we're going to return console.log error. If there is no error, we're just going to console.log the file was created. All right, so basically what we are doing is extracting the file name and the contents from our form that the user is going to fill in. And then we call in write file, which is going to write this particular file with these contents. So let's run our application and test it out. So npm start. And let me open that particular folder. So in our application, I have the files folder. Right now it is empty. And let me go back to our application. I'm going to give the file name as create file.txt. And then the file contents is text for file creation. So now I'm going to click on the create button. And if I toggle developer tools, it says the file was created and you can see that the file was actually created. So if I double click on create file.txt, you can see the contents. So text for file creation. This is exactly what we have over here. File name is create file.txt and the contents is text for file creation. This right here. So we have created a file using our electron application. All right, so now that we have implemented our create button, the next operation is to read the contents from a particular existing file. So I'm gonna exit this application. Let's go back to our code and then we are going to add event listener to button read. Now because the code is quite similar, let me just copy paste the code and explain what each line does. So we're going to say button read dot add event listener. So on the read button, add an event listener on the click event. Now within this function, first we are going to need the file name from which we need to read the contents. So let file is equal to path.join path name and then file name dot value. So file name dot value is basically the name of the file that the user is going to enter in the input field. And then to read a file, we are going to use the read file method from the fs module. So fs dot read file and the argument, the first one is the name of the file, this right here, file. And then we're going to have a callback function. Now in this callback function, we are going to have two arguments, error and the data. If there was an error, we are going to log that to the console. If there is no error, we are going to read the file contents and then assign it to the text area. So file contents is the ID of our text area. So file contents dot value is equal to the data. Now this data is nothing but the file contents of the particular input file. And then we can log to the console, the file was read. So I'm gonna restart our application. So npm start. 
And right now our input file name is empty. So we created createfile.txt just a few minutes ago. So let's try to read the contents of that particular file. So create file.txt. So now when I click on read, you can see that the contents is now updated. Text file, so sorry, text for file creation. So this is the content in this particular file name. And this read button is going to read that particular content and display it in the text area. Now the next operation is updating an existing file. But we don't need a separate handler for that. We can use read and create. So let me try to explain it. So we have a file createfile.txt and the content is text for file creation. Now if I want to update this particular file, all I have to do is change the content. So text for file update and then I can click on the create button again. So now, now what happens is it is going to create a file with the exact same name but the content is going to be different. So text for file update. So this is the updated content, basically an update operation. So that is why we don't need a separate update button or update functionality in our code. All right, finally, the delete button handler. So let me go back to Visual Studio Code. And again, let me copy paste the code because it is very similar. So we have button delete dot add event listener, click, and then a function. So we get a hold of the file name. So let file is equal to path dot join path name, file name dot value, basically the name that the user enters. And then to remove a file, we're going to call unlink method on the file system module. So fs dot unlink and, and then we specify the name of the file. So file and then a callback function. So when there is an error, we're going to log into the console. If there was no error, we are going to empty the file name. We are going to empty the file contents and then we're going to log to the console. The file was deleted. So let's restart our application and test this out. So npm start. So initially this is empty. Let me try to read create file.txt. I'm going to click on read file and then you can see that text for file update. And if you have a look at the developer tools, it should also say that the file was read. So now when I click on the delete button, it is going to remove create file.txt from our file system. So I'm going to click on delete. So you can see that the file was deleted. The file name is being emptied out and so are the contents. And if I go to our project folder and within that files folder, you can see that it is empty. So you can create a file. So test.txt with some contents test created. It is file is going to be created. You can see that. And if I remove this and click on read, you can see that the file was read. And if I click on delete, you can see that the file was deleted and removed from our file system. So that is about CRUD on files using Electron. Now in our application, we are just logging to the console the different messages and our path is fixed. So it always writes to the same files folder. So what I want you guys to try is learn the usage of system dialogs in Electron and apply them in this application to allow the user to select their own path every single time and also show the dialog boxes when a file was successfully created or deleted or if there was an error message. So instead of logging, you can actually have system dialogs. All right, so let me know if you guys are able to implement that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.